an opportunity for you, Dave, in an upcoming uh, play. It's called The Christmas Carol. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, a little channeling Ebenezer there. That's what I'm doing. Um, my cards are up here. Uh, my cell phone's there. Um, live in San Rafael. My wife and I have served as San Rafael's fire chief since 2007 and been a professional firefighter since 1978. So uh, I guess the gray hair is real. <laughs> um, uh, but clearly, this is something I love and I've always wanted to do. Uh, I also have 14 other family members uh, in San Rafael and Nevada, so we have vested interests here just like you, and uh, we share that concern. Um, did anyone receive a PG&E safety alert tonight? No. Not one of you. Not one of you. What was it notifying you about? I win. They might turn off power tomorrow. Oh, they might turn off the power tomorrow. Right. So you see this, this is a CPUC Public Utility Commission map in this red area. This is Marinwood right here in this red area. It's called a Tier 3. So learn if your power may be shut off for safety during high wildfire threats. I just typed in 777 Miller Creek Road and what did it say? We can do 596. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your location is served by PG&E and an electric line that runs through an extreme fire threat. For safety, it may be shut off. So this is within a tier three area, and you have the possibility of having the power shut off tomorrow because a red flag alert actually starts formally at 10 p.m. But I can tell you within Marin, we have provided additional staffing on five engines that was approved through the California Office of Emergency Services and coordinated through the Marin County Fire Department. So in San Rafael and Marinwood, we have staffed an additional engine that is uh, with four firefighters that is available to us. And then if you've heard this term about pre-positioning, so that what happens after disasters? A reaction. And so part of the 30 pieces of legislation that have passed and a flurry of activity over the past year in response to 40 plus deaths and, and 10,000 structures being lost and billions of dollars in damage um, are some sweeping uh, changes. And one of them, uh, during high fire conditions, really allows two things, and that is pre-positioning, increasing staffing of uh, fire engines, and also this coordination with PG&E to actually de-energize power that is likely to fail during a wind st uh, storm. So hopefully a combination of all of these things will help us uh, do a better job. Um, I can tell you that um, you know, the big question is, you know, are we disaster resistant? How well are we prepared for a similar event? Uh, the difference likely on that evening um, was probably wind speed, but most likely ignition. We failed to have an ignition source that night. Um, life was present uh, in further North Bay and uh, Sonoma and Napa. Um, there were over 100 mile an hour wind speeds generated when the Tubbs fire initiated and came rolling over the hill into Santa Rosa. Now, fire knows no boundaries, so it didn't stop at anything. That fire actually had occurred uh, decades before uh, what was the difference? Uh, more fuel had uh, grown and died off, and a lot more houses had been built in its path. And so fire did what it does, and it took out just about everything in its, in its path. And so how do we become more disaster resistant? As Elaine said, it's not a question of if, but when. So the pre-positioning pre has helped, but wildfire prevention is can be very helpful. So there's a combination of things that we can assist you with, and I, I love the group, and um, the coordination, and the collaboration, and the help. And we really are here. That's why we are in a place uh, here in the community. You have two of uh, the three firefighters that are on duty here. Captain Ryan uh, Brackett is here in the back from Marinwood, and also firefighter paramedic uh, Wills Kelly. So thank you both for being here. <laughs> But well, we're going to con uh, continue to experience climate change, as we all know about. And you know, part of the difficulty with that is recognizing that what's going to occur here locally and what can you do in advance. The best work is done before the fire, and it will occur. 
And so part of that is if you do everything right and your neighbor does nothing, you're at risk and the neighborhood is at, is at risk. One of the benefits of Firewise, and we're working now to help coordinate an effort that will have Marin would become a Firewise community, is it's peer pressure. And it's also the relationships that are built through the process and having the additional availability of grant funding to assist us with vegetation efforts and really removal of tons and tons of vegetation. Um, also, hardening your home and figuring out what went wrong. Um, our emergency manager, Quinn Gardner, uh, by the way, you know, San Rafael has a number of full-time staff members and uh, I really enjoyed working with Chief Roach and uh, wish him well in retirement. But we have, uh, there are six chief officers in San Rafael that are all at your service. In addition to Marshall, there's another vegetation management specialist, two fire prevention inspectors, um, and we have both a full-time emergency manager and an environmental uh, management coordinator. So there's a, they're all here for you. So that's part of the benefit of the relationship of uh, sharing services. So homes were part of the combustible landscape of the big fires. And, and where did the majority of those fires really come from? It was home to home. It was a conflagration. It was a firestorm. And truly, they were fire brands that caused the majority of those fires. They landed on homes, around homes, and they found points of vulnerability. That's what they do. And so trying to create a more defensible space around your home. And, and what do we do? What do we do each and every day when we call 911? You make, we make house calls. So I'm to here to tell you that we make house calls for non-emergencies too. We'll come out and take a look at your home in conjunction with the engine company and our staff and we'll give you a prescription of how well your home, how well your neighborhood is going to stack up when the fire that, that comes uh, hits. And so hopefully we can help you prepare for that. There's some legislative changes that are in the works. You're gonna see some code changes. Some are gonna apply retroactively. You had a, anybody here have a wood-shaped roof? That's good. Uh, <laughs> does anyone here have uh, any plants that are uh, immediately adjacent to their home? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does anyone have any, anywhere near pine trees, eucalyptus trees? And we can go on and on and name the things that are there. So we can help you with a plan, and not one that's gonna denude all your landscaping, but hopefully to do it right and allow both you uh, and your loved ones in your home a chance to survive. So there's a lot of uh, good tips we can provide, and, and I, what I'd like to do in the future is schedule a session and we'll directly talk about homes and go through uh, some of what worked and what didn't um, that I think will be helpful. I also wanted to give a, a little bit of, since my time is done, uh, but I'm gonna take a little bit of Quinn's time, uh, who was <laughs> supposed to go next, to talk a little bit about the earthquake, because uh, much in the same, there is no warning, and uh, you heard repeatedly about Alert Marin. If you haven't done so, please sign up to make sure you're going to be notified. Don't expect that you're gonna, you know, someone may come knocking at your door. And so you know, so we talked about the 1,700 homes, the 6,000 people that live in Marinwood. How many firefighters are on duty? 24-7. Three. There are three. How many are on duty in San Rafael 24-7? 23. So we've got 26 firefighters and we've got seven fire engines to essentially protect our community that are immediately available that we know we can always count on. Tonight, we have one more. So we're actually bumped the number to 30. Um, and we'll have that for the next 24 hours. And the nice thing about it is the state's actually going to reimburse us for that cost. Um, but all of this is risk management. And so what we want to do is that earthquake's not going to give you a warning, but we also need to look at hardening our homes by preparing ourselves and our neighborhoods that, so we can really help each other. So sign up for the alerts, have a plan, have a go bag, and, and all of this translates because what happened, some of the tragic stories that came out of the Bay Area were literally, what did people bring with them when they really had to run out the door? And they thought about it, well, I grabbed this and I grabbed that, but I forgot everything that was really important to me. So if you've got that done in advance, um, that's a huge advantage. Um, and the main thing is don't delay. When you do get the order, and I think one of the things, what happened down in, in uh, Montecito near Santa Barbara? Did you hear about the creek and one side or the other and a ma mandatory and advisory evacuation? 
if you if you receive an evacuation notice, whether it's advisory or mandatory, take what you need and go. It can all be replaced. I mean, yes, things are very possessions are very dear, but we can't replace you. So heed the advice of the professionals and, and go um, and be prepared to do that. So and I think in, in a lot of ways, um, and just summarizing, there are uh, additional classes that are going to be available. Maggie mentioned a schedule. I don't want to limit ourselves to a schedule or specific means. If there's a need to put on a class and we have enough interest, we'll figure out a way to put on a class. Um, whether we do that in a weekend, whether we do it in a two-hour block, or whether we do when we come to you and we come to the neighborhood and do it. So we want to make sure we take full advantage of the great cooperation amongst the neighborhood and see that we work all uh, together through this because that's what it's going to take. We'll do our absolute best and literally give our lives for others uh, to help. But it's not going to be enough if this big fire really does come our way. So uh, again, my, uh, my card's here. My cell phone's on there. Call me anytime. Um, we're here to help. And I'm really glad you're taking these additional steps. And it's uh, great to see you all. So thank you. Thank you. It doesn't, it doesn't, here's the great thing. You know, for years, since 1980s, uh, San Rafael has actually provided all the paramedic service for you, right? We provided it to four political entities, the two CSAs, 19 to 13, and San Rafael and Marinwood. Fires, emergencies, they don't know any boundaries, and I don't think this type of uh, pre-planning, prevention, disaster preparedness should matter either. It's not where you live. We, we'll handle all of that, and that's all covered. You know, you're actually, if you live in Upper Lucas Valley, um, under contract, you're provided fire rescue and paramedic services by Marinwood and San Rafael, uh, and supported by the county. So we're, it's all the same, and we want to be able to help you. Yes? Uh, Chief, over the last 50 years, there have been two major fires yes. uh, on this hill up here. Yes. And uh, fortunately, in, in either case, did any house burn. Uh, we were fortunate because there weren't any big fires going on anywhere else, and the bombers came in real fast and took care of them. Right. Uh, but it's been about 20 years since the last fire. And what's up there now is an awful lot of dead wood and underbrush. It's really thick. Is there any hope of having something done about that? I, I believe there is. And much like this, with the Hanley fire that occurred in, in Santa Rosa, same kind of conditions. Well, it hadn't burned in 50 years. And what had been done since then to thin and actually create breaks? So now more than ever, I must say that we've got a fantastic cooperation with Marin County Open Space that is actually cooperatively working with fire agencies. We do have an overall strategy and plan. Part of what Supervisor Conley talked about was an effort that we're coordinating. We're actually mapping these areas. They're mapping the vegetation. They're determining the age of that vegetation, where the uh, highest priority should be, and then whether it's the TAM crew or other methods, um, and in some cases, whether we're, we're, uh, we're removing the stuff mechanically, we're collecting it, and then we're burn piles that we can burn in the winter months. Hopefully, we continue to have rain. Um, but we'll be doing that. But we absolutely want to do that, and I recognize that threat. And that's primarily the reason uh, that this is a red zone uh, for the CPUC and PG&E, uh, be because of that fire history. Uh, that's exactly right. So, and we're committed to do that. Thank you. Yes. I live on Las Colinas, which backs up to Roundtree. Right. And that drainage ditch on my side is full of growth. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who to call. Uh, can the fire department do something about it? So you just did. You just reported it. And we're taking it over. <laughs> and not only is it a fire issue, it's also a flood control issue. 
So, uh, and we're not, we're not about pointing fingers. That's the best thing to know about the fire department. If you've got some kind of problem, I encourage you to call the fire department because we usually try to figure it out versus, well, you know what? You're gonna have to go file a claim or call somebody else, something like that. We we'll really try to work. So we'll, uh, we'll check that out and see what we can do to help solve it. Yes. Uh, okay. I just uh, understood that, um, um, and I thought I read about it in the paper recently that um, um, our uh, Marinwood Fire Department is losing more um, help, and er, because we're going to be uh, connected to San Rafael, mm -hmm. so we, we're not going to have as you said three persons here? Yeah, actually, um, Marinwood just made a move to bolster uh, the support. So actually, you uh, you multiplied your, your effort and, and staffing and support. So oh, they, they actually made a, a very positive move. Oh, good, I believe. Good, so good. That's all in the best interest of the community. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, one last one. Okay, so just to go but back. I, but I'll be here. <laughs> to go back to the creek, if those of us who live along the creek, we all you know, call and arrange to have uh, inspections of our property and the adjacent property, which is the CSD property along the creek. Is that, would that help in making the fire department really aware of what the, the dead wood back there? And how it would. My dad always told me to under promise and over deliver. Okay. But I'll, <laughs> What I, what I promise to do is make sure we complete an assessment and figure out within the means of the law and available without triggering CEQA, right. what exactly we can do to improve the fire safety of that area. Right. So we've taken note of it and we'll, we'll check it out. Great, thank you. Because I'm afraid actually that, because I lived in the same area there, right. thank you. If the fire starts through there, that 100 foot defensible space is, is right. It's meaningless. It's, it's meaningless. meaningless. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's so much fuel. There's right. I mean, so right. So sometimes it's you know some one one, one bite at one bite at a time, and we'll have to figure out what exactly we can do. So thank you. And, and we did have we called Luke with Marinwood, and he brought out the old chief, and we were told nothing could be done. Okay. So. There's no money. <laughs> All right, well, um, I won't completely say nothing can be done, it's not in my vocabulary, but I, I'm, I can't quite imagine that there's a situation where nothing can be done. So, anyway, we'll do our best. Thank you very much. Thank you.